What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. The Boston Celtics have officially lost in the NBA Finals, which is leading us to this Boston Celtics offseason rebuild today. But before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like, of course, subscribe if you're new around here. Enjoy this video. The Golden State Warriors are just that team, man, aren't they? The Warriors are just that good, bro. It is that simple. The Boston Celtics make it all the way to the finals after being somewhat disappointing in the regular season, then eventually turning it around. So overall, the Celtics had a really really good season let's take nothing away from that it just unfortunately fizzled out a little bit in the finals the warriors had the upper hand and here we are trying to make this team better this offseason so of course this team is just a team that went to the finals so not really sure what the moves are going to be this is going to be a tough one today i'm not going to lie but i'm going to do my best to try to put this team back to where they just were and win a championship for boston here in this offseason rebuild so let's get started shall we so Staff signing, I'm Udoka, ended up being a really good hire for the Celtics. So, of course, there's no reason to change that. All I need to do now is just fill out this coaching staff, and we are golden, which I will do, and then I'll be right back with you. So now that the coaching staff is completely filled out, we can kind of look at everything we have going for us. We don't have a first-round pick, I think, because of the Derek White trade, if I'm not mistaken. They traded a first to get him. So, uh, you know, he was actually decent. I mean, he kind of fills it out a little bit in the finals, and... Uh, We'll, we'll see what we're going to do with him. But of course, we're going to try to make a move this offseason that's going to be good for this team. The one thing I think the Celtics don't have right now, and for the longest time we said they never had a rebounding slash defensive center, Robert Williams is that for them. He was playing injured, and the man is a freaking stud, so he will be the center. Al Horford is going to be interesting. He was a really good player. The man is 36 years old. I think if you're Boston, you decline his team option or whatever guaranteed money it is, you decline that, and then you resign him for something cheaper because... You know, giving him 26 million, unless if you're playing on trading that expiring away to get something different, then I and I don't really know what you do. I, I don't know. I don't know what the Celtics have planned for Al Horford's contract. But for me, I think just like declining it and then signing him to something cheaper makes a lot of sense. Uh, maybe he's not down with that. Who knows, man? It'll be interesting to see how that all unfolds. But let's get into the draft because we literally only have a second round pick. So it's really not going to matter who we take here. They may be part of the rotation. They probably most likely won't be, though. I'm just going to take Orlando Robinson here as a backup big man for this team because I don't know if we're going to lose Al Horford or not. Trust me when I tell you, though, I do not plan on accepting that team option that he has because it is worth $27 million. The only way I would accept it if I'm Boston is if I'm trading him, which I don't think it makes sense to do. He was actually really good for you in the playoffs. So maybe you keep him around on a cheaper deal, like I said. But, to, you know, accepting that $26 million, guaranteeing that money, just not for me. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to decline it. And then I'm going to try to resign him in free agency. So hopefully that works out the way I wanted it to. So you got a couple of restricted free agents. Uh, but Al Horford, like I said, uh, we do not have his bird right. So I don't know if we're going to be able to just simply resign him. I imagine we're going to be able to. And yes, we can. So uh, like I said, a cheaper deal for Al Horford, I think makes a lot of sense declining that option. Uh, unless, if, like I said, unless Al Horford is not down with that, then, then I guess that's the only way you don't do it. But now that that is solved, we weren't like, you know, any, we weren't in the mix to get any like crazy free agents. So we look at the team right now. You have Marcus Smart, Peyton Pritchard, Jalen Brown, Derek White, Jason Tittum, Aaron Naismith, Al Horford, Grant Williams. Then you have like Robert Williams, Daniel Tyus, and then Orlando Robinson. And we just got in the draft. So I want to make a move for, for guard. I really do. I think the Celtics need a point guard that uh, is going to help out this roster. A natural point guard. And uh, there's a couple guys that I think make a lot of sense for this team. Maybe even Ricky Rubio, if you could sign him for cheap. Uh, but a guy I kind of like, and I think a lot of people are suggesting in the community tab below uh, for the Celtics. I mean, John Tamari would be awesome, but of course, he's not going to be available. I don't think the Spurs would trade him. Uh, looking at other options, like I guess if you could find a way to get to Fred Van Vliet's money and the Raptors are willing to deal him, that's another interesting idea. Uh, Simon's not going to be available. Obviously, Maxi Fox, no. DeAndre Russell could potentially be available, but I don't even know how, many, how much salary we could match. So... Let me see what salary we could match uh, when, it, when it comes to not trading like core players. So it would have to be like Daniel Tyus's money, definitely in the trade. Then you have like Peyton Pritchard. I mean, he's been, you know, playing some good minutes though. I guess you'd throw Derek White in the trade if you need to. I don't think you're trading Marcus Smart, obviously. Not trading Robert Williams. I mean, I don't think Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum will be traded this offseason. I know people have tried to split them up for a long time. Aaron Naismith's money could be in here technically. So that's about $11 million you have going for you. And then I think Derek White would om almost have to be in the trade, right? I feel like it would make a lot of sense for him to be in the trade. So I don't know. I don't know. So basically, I think the guy I wanted to go for was Malcolm Brogdon from the Pacers. And a lot of people suggested that. But D'Angelo Russell, someone I didn't even think about could also make sense. Or if John Wall got bought out and uh, he was like 
available for cheap boston should maybe look into him as well that could be interesting but there's they need a guard they need a guard as simple as that they need another guy that's like a natural point guard so if i try to get down to russell i'm just curious how this would go for me so i'm gonna try not to trade anything crazy obviously i'd throw naismith so yeah we're still not we're not gonna get to his money it's just too much money for us and then if I threw Derek White in the trade, we'd be there. So I could go for D'Angelo Russell or I could go for Brogdon. Either way, I think either of them are fine. Um, either of them, both of them are like the same type of, well, actually D'Angelo Russell on an expiring contract. Well, uh, you have also, you have Malcolm Brogdon like a longer term contract, but it's like cheaper. And I'm not sure what Russell's going to demand after this year, but I feel like I go for Brogdon so much. And also I go for Brogdon a lot. I feel like I want to go for D'Lo instead in today's video. So I'm going to do that, actually. I'm going to go for D'Angelo Russell instead. The Timberwolves maybe are going to deal him, and I think he could make some sense in Boston for a natural guard they need. So Daniel Tice, Aaron Naismith, Derek White for D'Angelo Russell. Can I do this without? No, I'd have to have Derek White in the trade. So I don't love the idea of trading Derek White. I think he could be you know, a decent piece for the Celtics going forward, but there's really nothing else I can throw this trade unless if I threw in Marcus Smart, which I just don't want to do. I think Celtics fans would kill me if I did that. So Derek White, Aaron Naismith, Daniel Tyus for James Russell. They don't agree. I need to turn off trade override. I, I had that on because of uh, some uh, trades I was doing to make the Christian Wood trade happen and stuff like that. But let me turn it off real quick and let me come back to that. All right, so we're back to the natural trade that we had. And obviously they declined it to start things off. I mean... Do I throw in Orlando Robinson we just drafted to make it work? Or do we throw in a first? What do we want to do? Do we throw in a couple seconds to see if that moves the needle first? And then we go see if we need to throw Robinson in here. Okay, so, so far it's not working out for us. Orlando Robinson, they agree. So we threw in Orlando Robinson and we got D'Angelo Russell on the team now. So D'Angelo Russell is kind of that natural point guard. I think Brogdon would have made a lot of sense too. But just for some nuance here, because I always go for Malcolm Brogdon. I wanted to get D'Angelo Russell. Somebody I never trade for ever. I don't think I've ever trade for D'Angelo Russell like that so D'Lo Marcus Smart so I think what I want to do now with this team is I want to move everybody down a little bit so Jalen Brown's a small forward Marcus Smart's a shooting guard which I think he's better at Jason Tatum to power forward so that is going to be kind of your mix now it's D'Lo Peyton Pritchard you'll have Marcus Smart Jalen Brown Jason Tatum Al Horford Grant Williams but I think I want to move Al Horford to more of a backup center position and of course you could still have those times where you have Al Horford and Robert Williams on the floor at the same time you definitely could still do that but this could definitely be another lineup you could have. And we could still use like some other backup wings for sure. So yeah, I kind of like this. I think Denzel Russell could be fun. So we need a backup wing player if we're going to rely on uh, Peyton Pritchard to be really good. I know some people want me probably to resign Isaiah Thomas, which, hey man, you know, maybe we will. Eric Gordon is available. Kenrich Williams off the bench could make some sense. Beverly, Gary Payton, a lot of good options. I think I'm going to go for Kenrich Williams though off the bench for this team. I think he could be a really nice piece. And then uh, Isaiah Thomas may not be available for us anymore. Let me see if he's still here. If he's still here, I'll sign him because I know people would be happy if I did. So let's see. I don't think he's here anymore. Oh, yeah, he is. Let's see. Minimum contract for Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas back in Boston. You know, I know you guys are happy to see that. Brent Forbes, Damian Lee. Uh, they got Victor Lodipo. So a lot of interesting guys you could get. But Isaiah Thomas, Peyton Pritchard, Marcus Smart, Kenrich Williams, Jalen Brown. Grant Williams, Jason Tatum, and I have a feeling Al Horford might go down or overall like crazy, which I don't think is fair. You could bring Ennis Freedom back to Boston if you wanted to. I'm sure Celtics fans are not wanting that to happen. But Mason Plumley, I guess we can sign as just an insurance thing. But play progression after all those moves, Matt Ryan, Sam Hauser is back, but Rob Williams is down. You have D'Angelo Russell down, and you have Marcus Smart down, and then you also have Al Horford going down seven overall. Obviously, at you know at 36 years old, I kind of expected that to happen. Isaiah Thomas is down, so the bench. Might be a little disappointing, but for the most part, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown paired alongside Marcus Smart and D'Angelo Russell, I think is really nice. Uh, if you could convince Minnesota to give D'Angelo Russell, I'd do it. If not, Brogdon, like I said, on the Pacers makes a lot of sense, but we know the Celtics just need a natural point guard on the team. Or, like I said, cheaper options could be Ricky Rubio, John Wall. One of those four guys for the Celtics, I think, makes a lot of sense. Well, this is your roster now. D'Angelo Russell... Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Robert Williams, Grant Williams. Wow, a lot of Williams here. I just didn't, I just realized that. And you have Peyton Pritchard, Al Horford, and then Isaiah Thomas. Now, this might be a little disrespectful, but I'm just going to round this to a nine minute rotation. That's going to leave Isaiah Thomas out of the rotation, unfortunately. Uh, but this is going to be your bench and this is going to be your rotation. So I kind of like it. Proficiency wise, we're sitting at a four star balance. I mean, we're looking to be back in the finals, obviously. We just made it to the finals. We're looking to make that same thing again. Let's see if 2K grants me that wish, and let's see how good we are after trading for D'Angelo Russell and making some other moves. So at the end of the season, as usual, Luka Doncic wins MVP. Jabari wins Rookie of the Year on the Oklahoma City Thunder. 
Sixth man of the year goes to Anthony Simons on the Blazers. Honestly, man, I'm so excited for draft night. I can't wait to see. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to go live yet. I think I'm going to. I just got to find uh, the right time to do so, obviously, and uh, make sure everything's lined up for me to do that. But coach of the year goes to Lucas. Lucas is weird to have that kind of name. But then uh, Malachi Flynn, most approved. I need to fix the coaches as well because Taylor Jenkins got an extension. Mike Brown's on the Kings. You got uh, Kenny Atkinson on the Hornets now. So definitely something I still need to fix, but I'm probably wait I'm kind of waiting for all head coaching vacancies to be filled. Luca wins uh, or Luca's on the NBA first team. John Morant, all NBA first team. Uh, did we get Jason Tatum anywhere? Yes, he made all NBA second team, which you love to see. Averaging 29 per 36. Career stats advance. And then his career stats this year were 26. We'll look at that all together though here in a second. Here's John NBA third team and then all defense first team. All defensive second team we had marcus smart make it what about robert williams man robert williams maybe should be on here as well the man was a freaking stud in the playoffs so him healthy i can't imagine what that's going to look like going forward but regardless we got the second seed in the eastern conference brooklyn got the number one seed so we got milwaukee and detroit and they got boston or not boston chicago miami and they got atlanta toronto indiana and cleveland so this is a interesting playoff bracket that we have but if we look at the player stats real quick we had 26 from jason tatum 25 from jalen brown and as a third option, DeAndre Russell averaged a 19 and 6. So another ball handler next to Brown and Tatum is kind of what I wanted. That way you don't have to rely on Jalen Brown to handle the ball as much. 10, 10 points from Marcus Smart, 10 from Robert Williams, and also two blocks per game to add on top of that. Grant Williams with 9 points, Peyton Pritchard with 7, Al Horford with 7 and 4 off the bench. Our bench was kind of bad, obviously, but uh, we can maybe fix that if we don't win a championship this, uh, uh, this year. So let's see if we get in the playing tournament. I'm kind of hoping we get... Well, would I rather have the Bucks or the Pistons? I don't know. I mean, either one of them are kind of tough, I feel like. But we get the Pistons, which could be a, a bad thing for us. We got Killian Hayes, Cade Cunningham, Sadiq Bay, Jeremy Grant, Isaiah Stewart, Hamdi Diallo. They drafted Washington. Uh, we'll see how things go for us. It feels like they always draft Washington, or it seems like it, it definitely goes that way majority of the time. But regardless, let's see if we beat the Pistons. Game one, we are up 1-0 to start things off. We should beat them. I mean, we're literally the second seed. They're the seventh seed, but Detroit's definitely a little OP in this game, so I'm definitely not taking this for granted for sure. 32-23-22. DeAndre Russell's been really good for us, so we have to be happy about that. Game three, up 3-0. to zero. So I think it's safe to say we probably got this one, and we're going to sweep the Pistons. Good. All right, now we get to play Toronto or Atlanta, so that's going to be interesting. As we get the Toronto Raptors in round two. So the Raptors upset the Hawks technically by the seeding uh, standards. But we got Fred Van Vliet, which is somebody I think the Celtics should maybe also look at if he's available. But I think it'd be tough to get him. They got Gary Trent Jr., OG Nobi, You got Scotty Barnes, Siak, and Presha Chua, Makai Flynn, Chris Boucher, Delano Banton, former Trailblazer OG Nobi. You know, he averaged 14. Just kidding, man. As a Blazers fan. I really want OG and Obi, but it's probably not going to happen. So let's see if we can beat them, though. Game one, we're down 1-0. We lose by six. So Toronto, 33-32. That, yeah, that's a good stat line from Fred Van Bleet and Siakam. Let's see if we can win game two, though. We do. So 143 to... Wow, we killed them this game. So Tatum drops 40. And then, uh, yeah, the Raptors really didn't have much to say. Can we win game three? No, we're down. We get blown out in this game. It's like the Miami Heat, Boston, Celtics series all over again. Can we win game four? No, we're actually down 3-1 to one to the Raptors, which is actually really unfortunate. Okay, can we come back from 3-1 to one deficit? I believe we can, but we're going to have to lock it in. So SimCast all these games real quick and see if we can come back from 3-1 to one deficit because I don't think we should be down to the Raptors. But hey, here we are. So we got to come back if we're going to do this. So 31 comebacks are pretty common in 2K unless if you blow the lead here, which is look, looking like what we're going to do. So we're going to get eliminated in five to the Toronto Raptors, which is quite disappointing. Got Brooklyn, Toronto, and the Pelicans go on to win it all. So we get to the second round and get eliminated in five by a six seed, which is uh, not good at all. So we're going to run it back one more year. As you guys know, we haven't done one of these offseason rebuilds in so long. Uh, but if you do remember, we only do two years in these rebuilds because we primarily wanted to focus on one offseason. And this is just spillage because I don't think I'll be doing too much. I mean, the only thing I really need to do is probably resign D'Angelo Russell. We might have a draft pick as well, so we might be able to add a good bench player here. We have uh, the 27th overall pick. So, yeah, we can see if we can grab a couple of good bench pieces potentially because that's something we definitely lacked in. That might help out a lot if we get, like, some good bench players. So, Sidney Sokosko, don't know how good he is, but welcome. And then uh, what else we got? Alex Fudge. I mean, that's just a crazy good name, so I'll take it. And then 39, we have... I'll take Oscar because we traded our, you know, center last year we drafted. So... We got a 74, 75, and 75. So not too bad. Player options. Peyton Pritchard will accept. 
he's gone up in overall which is good and then grant williams of course somebody we love off our bench as well so let's see uh what we can get so we got deandre russell we only want 16 million per year which i think is really good so that's really good value at 13 million a year yeah especially for what he gave us more than happy to accept that i do not want to renounce grant williams that makes no sense so 2k stop suggesting that let's give grant williams and then al horford's probably gone i assume he actually retired because i don't see him anywhere i do want grant williams back uh for the boston celtics so our bro why did it renounce his damn rights bro i hate it when 2k does crap like that i'm getting him back i do not care i i wanted to accept his contract but whatever so d'angelo russell Peyton pritchard solid we got city sokosko i don't know how much i should rely on him uh alex fudge and kenrich williams will be the back of small forward then we'll have grant williams and oscar will probably be the back of center so we definitely still could use like another good bench player and uh we got kcp i signed caleb and cody martin all the time but they're always really solid players uh alec burks Juan Toscano. We got Derek Jones Jr. or Royce O'Neal, which I actually like the idea of one of those two as well. O'Shea Brissett makes a lot of sense. I'm going to sign O'Shea Brissett, and then I'm also getting Grant Williams back. 2K is stupid. So Grant Williams will be back on the Celtics. I was definitely 100% accepting that contract, not trying to renounce him. 2K kept suggesting to do so. So Grant Williams will be back on this roster. We're going to run it back for year number two. Same rotation, really. Added a couple bench pieces. Let's see what happens this second season after we get Grant Williams back because that is stupid. We lost him. At the end of year number two, LaMelo Ball wins MVP. Victor on the Knicks wins Rookie of the Year. Damian Lillard, sixth man on the Blazers. Davis, defensive player. Marjan Bochamp on the Suns, most approved. Nick Nurse, coach of the year, and David Powell is your executive. So we got the third seed again. Jace Tatum makes All-NBA first team. Uh, but we, yeah, we're looking to run it back and obviously go on all the way this year. If we can get to the Eastern Conference Finals at the very least, I'd feel decent about that. But of course, uh, D'Angelo Russell, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, A from Rob Williams, A from Marcus Smart, A from Grant Williams. A lot of... Uh, contribution off our bench obviously but we're looking to go very far so hopefully we can take care of the hawks and then get to the eastern conference finals let's uh somebody cut around against atlanta so we're up two to zero three to zero we sweep the hawks okay so that's a good start toronto ends up being uh beating the bucks in five now to get the hornets and now we get the cleveland cavaliers which the Cavs are always pretty good in the simulation as well so yeah i'm a little nervous about playing them Game one, we're up one to zero though. So that's a good start. Coral drops 22, 29 from Jalen Brown, especially Garland, man. He's a menace in this file. We're up two to zero so far. So Garland really hasn't showed up at all. He's averaging 27 in the playoffs, but in these first two games, he's not been that good, but maybe he's going to hear me and go off in game three. Let's see. Uh, no, three to zero and Garland drops 28, but it didn't matter. Jalen Brown dropped 44. Are we going to sweep the Cavs as well? No, they do win game five. Okay, fair. Or game four, I should say game five they win let's not blow a three to zero lead here come on okay there we go so we end up beating the Cavs in six and now we get the team that eliminated us last year the toronto raptors who got tyler hero how did how did they pull that off who did they lose and free up i guess gary trent's money came off the books is that what it was yeah and then fred van Vliet was a free agent as well i thought 18 million yeah i mean yeah okay shout out to the raptors they got tyler hero added onto this roster i don't know if we beat this team game one we start off 1-0, so that's a good start. Game two, up 2-0. Two okay, so we get eliminated by them last year, but we're up 2-0 to zero to start things off. Okay, this is where it turns around, huh? No, 3-1. to one. Can we go up and beat them in five? No, beat them in six. Come on. Let's go, baby. We're in the finals. We get to play the Timberwolves, and we made a trade with them earlier in the video. They got Bradley Beal to add alongside Anthony Edwards and Cat. Kind of like that for Minnesota. They have Derek White still, so hopefully Derek White's not in his revenge tour here. But we have a lot of big wings, which is what I like about the Celtics roster right now. Adding O'Shea Brissett, Kenrich Williams, and you got, you know, a lot of wings in the roster. Mark Smart's a good defender. Andrew Russell, I don't think, is that good. But, I mean, like I said, he was kind of that point guard we needed. So, can we beat Minnesota? Game one, we're up 1-0. Beat them by three. 35 and 19 from Tatum. Yeah, you're not beating us when we're doing all that. 113 and 110, though. They win game two. We win game three. Beat them by one. Game four is going to go to us. And game five is going to go to us. Let's go, baby. We have won a championship here for the Boston Celtics to end off this video. So tomorrow, I will also be doing a Golden State Warriors offseason rebuild. Uh, let me know what you want to see me do with the Warriors. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, obviously, Jordan Poole's contract extension is coming up. I don't remember. I don't think he's a restricted free agent this offseason. I think it's next year, but I could be mistaken. Maybe it is this year. I think Wiggins is on expiring contract. So there will definitely be some interesting moves that the Warriors have to make. They could either just, you know, keep paying hella luxury tax or they could maybe make the team a little cheaper. We'll see. But we end off the video with the championship for the Celtics. And now we get to do a Warriors one tomorrow unless a trade happens today slash tonight.
then I'll probably do a video over the trade instead of the Warriors video. But thank you guys for watching. Drop a like if you didn't enjoy. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.